Hi, it's Taylor with Mom on the Spectrum, and in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a dictionary that I've put together to help you understand some of the basic concepts of life on the autism spectrum. I've got 40 terms for you today that I've worked on developing definitions for. Based on my own research from the past few years, I was diagnosed as autistic at the age of 31. I'm 34 now. So these are all my definitions. I'm not a medical provider. I just want to offer this to you as a way to better understand life on the spectrum as a late diagnosed autistic adult. So please do your own research. Please don't make any medical decisions based off of these definitions. I am going to provide some additional links in the description so that you can continue your research if you choose to do so. This autism dictionary is also available for you to download as a PDF and I will put the link here in the description. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Like I said, I'm Taylor. I'm a late diagnosed autistic mom of two, and I started this channel after my autism diagnosis to help create awareness and educate others about how autism presents in adults, especially in women. If that sounds like something that might interest you, please subscribe to the channel, like this video if it's helpful to you, and we've got a beautiful community here. I hope you'll engage with them in the comments because they offer a lot of support and validation to so many experiences that we really need and deserve that for. With that being said, let's jump right into our dictionary here today. The first term is hashtag actually autistic. This hashtag is used to differentiate autistic content creators from others who speak on our behalf. So as you start your search for what it means to be an autistic adult, make sure that you pay attention to this hashtag so you're getting information from people who are actually autistic and not people who are observing the experience from another perspective. Alexithymia is the inability to put words to emotions. As autistic adults, we can become very overwhelmed by big emotions, and it can be really hard to put those experiences into words. This can lead to a breakdown in communication and the relationships in our life, and also prevent us from getting the support that we really need. Holistic is a term used to describe anyone who does not identify as autistic. So if you've come across this one before, that's all it means. RFID, this is a new term to me that I wish I would have known way earlier in life. It stands for Avoidant Restrictive Food Intake Disorder. And this is an eating difference common to autistic individuals that involves avoiding and restricting food intake due to upsetting texture, smell, appearance, or other factors. One may feel like they have an appetite, but they're unable to eat. If you're finding you have a connection to this term and it's speaking to you, please continue to do some research here so that you can get some support to help you better understand this experience. I'll, I'll put a link to some information in the description for you. ADHD is a term used within the neurodivergent community to describe the experience of living with both autism and ADHD. It's not a medically official term, but we like to use it in the community. It just makes things easier. Autistic inertia was a life-changing term for me. This is the desire to remain in a constant state. So when we work hard, we want to continue working hard. And when we rest, we want to continue resting. This is very helpful for understanding the difficulties with task switching and transitions. Once I understood that it's an autistic thing to have trouble with transitions, like sitting in the car for a long time before I go inside of the grocery store, it really helped me have so much more grace for myself. The next term is burnout. Burnout is prolonged overwhelming exhaustion resulting from autistic challenges like sensory overwhelm, masking, lack of accommodations and support. Some symptoms may include fatigue, loss of speech, increase in executive dysfunction, increased problems with interoception and proprioception. Some of those terms you might be thinking, what are those? Buckle up because we still have a lot more ground to cover. I do have a resource with more information on autistic meltdowns and burnouts that I've put together to help us better navigate those challenges. Just check out the description. I truly spend so much time putting together the description so you have as many resources as possible to help support you. Okay, the Coke bottle effect. I first heard about this from my friend Orion Kelly, that autistic guy, go check out his channel. He has a whole video over this topic, but this is the autistic experience of masking for a prolonged period of time and then waiting for a safe space, usually your home, to fully process the effects of the day. This is represented by shaking a Coke bottle or masking and then opening the lid, which represents processing and letting go. I notice this a lot with my kids at school. Everybody's like, they're so great. They do so great at school all through the day. And then they get home and there's a huge come down period where they really need a lot of attention and processing. CPTSD, complex post-traumatic stress disorder. This is a term used to describe the effects of chronic trauma. Many autistics relate to this term, likely from a lifetime of being misunderstood and a lack of support. CPTSD can have symptoms that mirror autism, which can lead to misdiagnosis. 
I also want to mention this term is not listed in the DSM, so it's not an official medical term, but it is highly relatable within the autistic community. Doing more research on this term in particular, I feel like really lends a lot of support and resources for the autistic community to deal with some really chronic issues that we face in our life. Delayed processing. I wish I would have known about this when I was a teenager. The need for extra time, space, and energy to integrate an experience and find ways to communicate about said experience. So you might have a conversation, you might have an experience, and you're unable to communicate about it or really understand how it's affected you until you've had some space and time away from that experience. I found it very helpful to understand this term as an autistic adult. Demand avoidance, also called pathological demand avoidance. This is the practice of avoiding demands and expectations placed on an individual. For many autistic individuals, demands create a great deal of cognitive dissonance, frustration, and even defiance. There's a whole website, a whole study over this term. I'm going to post more information in the description, but this can be very helpful to understand as it relates to relationships and employment. Double empathy. Honestly, this is something that has been hard for me to understand, which I guess is a bit paradoxical. Double empathy is a term coined by Damian Milton to describe how people with different backgrounds may have trouble understanding each other. So both autistic and holistic individuals may have differences that contribute to social disconnection and misunderstandings. This term is really helpful to understand because a lot of times socially the blame or the fault is put on the autistic individual because we're different and we don't, we don't understand the other person or we're lacking in some way. But really it goes two ways because the holistic person, the non-autistic person, they also have differences that are going to keep them from understanding us. So the double empathy problem is just a way to approach this idea that both parties involved in a social exchange are going to have differences that can possibly lend to miscommunication and misunderstandings. Dyspraxia. This is a term that probably affects many of you, but you had no idea what it was called. This is a neurodevelopmental condition that affects motor skills and may cause issues with fluidity of movement. I feel like usually we pay more attention to this idea in children, but it definitely affects adults as well and can make you feel pretty clumsy. Echolalia. This is the repetition of sounds made by another individual or object. So my son does this all the time. Somebody else says a word and he repeats it, repeats it, repeats it. The microwave makes a sound and he hums that same sound over and over again. So echolalia is a way of processing auditory information and can also be a way that we stim. We'll talk about stimming in just a little bit. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. I hope I'm saying that correctly. This is a group of connective tissue disorders with symptoms such as hypermobility of joints and translucent skin that bruises easily. EDS is relatively common within the autistic community. And I get a lot of people commenting for more information on this. So here's the definition, take it and run with it. This is something that personally I do not experience in my life. So I don't have a whole lot of information to contribute at this time, but I wanted to share the term because it does relate to many people in the autistic community. Empath. I had to throw this one in here. I work with the autistic community day in and day out, and I notice a huge connection between being autistic and being an empath. An empath is someone who feels what other people feel in a visceral way. It's almost as if it's happening to you. Empathic qualities are often developed at the expense of the self. Many empaths were taught from a young age to feel for others before themselves and thus developed hypersensitivity to others' needs. So I wanted to mention this because I think a lot of times being an empath is kind of praised as a superpower, and I'm not saying that it's not, I'm just saying that it deserves to be explored from another angle as well. So do with that what you will. There's a lot more I wanna say there. But we have more terms! Executive dysfunction, this is also referred to as executive functioning differences. This is challenges with organization, planning, and emotional regulation that happen within the prefrontal cortex of the brain. Just real quick, there's a website called goblin.tools, I'm just gonna leave you with that. Check it out, you can thank me later, but it's definitely got a lot of help and support for executive functioning differences. Fawning. I hope all of you hear me on this one because this relates to so many autistic people that I know. Fawning is a trauma response in which one pretends that everything is fine, usually to avoid mistreatment. Other trauma responses include fight, flight, and freeze. Many of us have heard of those. Fawning can also be related to people-pleasing, which is another common experience among autistic individuals. 
If this is speaking to you, please make a little note here and do more research on this topic because understanding how we fawn in certain situations can really empower us to make some very important changes in our life to better support our sense of self. Hyperfocus is the ability to spend a prolonged period of time on one activity with intense concentration. This is oftentimes related to our special interest, which we're going to define when we get to the S's. Info dumping. This is also called oversharing. Info dumping is when an individual shares a large portion of information in a conversation, usually pertaining to a special interest, and this can make a conversation feel one-sided. Autistic people tend to be really good at info dumping. Interoception. This is the process of identifying internal cues within the body, such as thirst, hunger, and the need to urinate. So as an autistic person, it might be difficult to understand when we need to do those things, and that can add to us getting easily dysregulated. Internalized ableism. I added this by request from someone in the comments on a previous post. This is the subconscious practice of limiting or ignoring needs because one can survive without certain accommodations. Again, there's so much more to be said here, but even myself, I still notice a lot of ways that I have internalized ableism where I really keep myself from getting the support that I need and deserve because I should just be able to live without it. Masking. Masking is the autistic practice of downplaying or concealing one's own experience to avoid making others uncomfortable. Some examples include suppressing stems, downplaying sensory discomfort, making eye contact when you don't want to, and feigning interest in a conversation. I have so much to say about masking. I have a how to unmask course that I'm going to tell you about at the end of this video, so stay tuned. Meltdown, similar to burnout. An autistic meltdown is nervous system dysregulation caused by sensory overwhelm, social pressure, change in routine, and or other autistic challenges. It may result in feelings of overwhelm, loss of communication, intensified stimming, and increased executive dysfunction, just to name a couple of things. Next on our list is misdiagnosis. I wanted to include this term because this happens a lot on the road to an adult autism diagnosis. A misdiagnosis is an ill-fitting or incorrect medical label. Autistic individuals are often misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder, borderline personality disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. ADHD is often a co-occurring condition along with autism, but if you just have one piece of the puzzle, it really leaves a lot of information that needs to be explored and discovered. Nervous system regulation. This is a huge important thing for life on the spectrum. This is the process of restoring balance to our nervous system through practices such as deep breathing, meditation, movement, and mindfulness. Nervous system regulation is integral to managing many autistic stressors. It's an art, it's a lifelong practice, and I have so much more to say about it. I talk about this a lot on the channel. Neurological difference. I put this on here because just this one perspective shift really made a world of difference in my life. Autism is a neurological difference not a disorder. Neurodivergent. Simply put, this is an individual who exemplifies an atypical neurological profile. I use this term loosely because how do we define a typical neurological profile? I still don't know how to answer that question. Paradoxical effects. I felt like it deserved a place in this dictionary because some studies show that medications and supplements can have paradoxical effects on autistic individuals, possibly due to differences in serotonin levels. This is still being studied. There's not a whole lot of information out there yet, but when I talk about this within the community, there's such a huge response to this because many of us have experienced this in our life and haven't had the context in which to understand it. So it happens and you're not alone. Proprioception. This is the process of understanding how our body interacts with the world around us. Trouble proprioception can lead to deficits in motor skills, using more force than is necessary for everyday tasks and clumsiness. Rejection sensitive dysphoria. This is a big one. This is a term used to describe elevated levels of discomfort, frustration, and emotional dysregulation in the face of criticism and or feedback. This term is not included in the DSM, but RSD seems to be a common experience for many autistic individuals. And again, this is one of those terms it can be really beneficial to understand when it comes to employment. Selective or situational mutism. This is the inability to speak in certain situations. I could also maybe put this under the misdiagnosis category because many people are diagnosed with selective mutism before they get an autism diagnosis. It's not that it's incorrect, it's just a very small piece of the puzzle. Sensitive versus responsive. I know this isn't really a term, but it's another one of those approaches and mindset shifts that has made a world of difference, like literally changed my life. 
Thank you to my psychologist, Dr. Williams. So many of us have been labeled sensitive in a negative way. Try replacing the word sensitive with responsive. Many of us have been trained to downplay our intuition, but the feedback our bodies give us is so important. So you're not too sensitive, you're responsive, and that information is vital to understanding who you are as a person on this planet. Sensory overwhelm and overstimulation. This is the result of too much information coming in through your senses and not enough time or space to process it. Happens every day for most people on the spectrum. Sensory processing. This is making sense of and responding to the information received via our senses. Example, if the sun is too bright, you may decide to put on sunglasses. Special interests, here we are. Autistic individuals tend to focus on certain interests in an intense way. Many even become experts in their particular field of study. Special interests are a huge talking point for autistic individuals and often an important part of daily routines. Spoon theory, I have a whole video over this. This is a theory developed by Christine Miserandino to help communicate what it's like living with a chronic illness and or disability. Understanding this theory can be very useful for managing your emotional, mental, and physical resources. Please, if you're unfamiliar with this theory, do some more research here. This is another one that has changed my life. Stimming. Stimming is any repetitive behavior that helps regulate the nervous system and or express emotion. So many different forms of stims. Again, I have a whole entire video over this concept. Uneven productivity. This is a term that was shared in one of the community groups that I ran. And because of delayed processing, I did not understand how vital this term was until after, like long after the session. And I don't remember who this individual was. So please come forward and I will give you all the credit you deserve. But this term really stuck with me because it's a huge pattern within the autistic community. We're going to define this as a term used to describe the autistic work cycle that typically includes periods of hyperfocus followed by an intense need for rest. So thank you individual who shared this term a long time ago in one of our classes. And then the last term on our list, we made it, unmasking. This is the practice of learning to trust one's intuition and make decisions based on one's own needs and desires and involves further developing one's sense of self and becoming less concerned with others' expectations. Unmasking, I feel like, is maybe one of the most important practices to embrace as a late-diagnosed autistic individual because we've spent so much of our lives covering up our own needs and wants and desires to make other people more comfortable. And it's time to stop doing that. It's time to start figuring out who we are, what we want and what we need. And I know that can be really scary. I remember I had this thought after I got diagnosed of, do I even know who I am? Who am I as a person? I've covered up so much of it that am I ever going to know who I am? And so over the past few years, as I've been learning about myself and my patterns, I've developed a course called How to Unmask, Cultivating Your True Autistic Self. This is a self-paced online course with over an hour of video lessons. It also has a reflection journal with guided questions. It has a guided meditation. It has downloadables. It has mantras that you can use every day in your unmasking journey. And it also provides a year of access to my online community full of other autistic individuals on their own unmasking journey. This course is for people like me who have found their place on the spectrum late in life either through a professional diagnosis or self-diagnosis. It's for people who are exploring the idea that they might be on the spectrum. People who feel like, I don't really know if I know who I am, but I'm ready to take a step towards finding out who that person is. I like to say that it's very accessible and easygoing. It's a slow and calm approach to developing your sense of self and getting clearer about what you want out of life and who you want to be. So if you're interested in signing up for that course, I would love to have you. You can sign up at any time and you have unlimited access to it. There's no time frame within which you have to complete it, but I will put a link to that in the description and you can comment below with any questions you have about that course. Remember that you can also download this dictionary. I would love it if this is helpful to you, if you share it with other people. I have people share some of my stuff with their therapists and psychologists. I'm always very grateful for that. I just want this to end up in as many people's hands as possible because if I would have understood the implications of these terms in my life years ago, I would be in a different place now. And I'm, I'm grateful for where I am, but I can't help to look back and think, wow, my life would have been radically transformed if I would have understood this even a year earlier. So take this, run with it, do your own research. Let me know what terms you would add in the comments. And thank you so much for watching. I truly am so honored to get to do what I do and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye.